Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will be leading the music this morning. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1249, 1249 in the back of your hymnal, or in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Preaching and presiding at this liturgy is Father Patrick Bergen. Our gathering song is number 1030, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 1030. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers in Christ, I'd like to just introduce myself, or reintroduce myself, as the case may be. My name is Father Patrick Bergen. I am a priest of the Archdiocese of Tabora in Tanzania, East Africa. Some of you may recall that I was a part of this community during my seminary studies. I did my diaconate here at Old St. Mary's. In addition to all of you, the wonderful parishioners, this is a very special place for me because I said my first Masses at this very altar. I'm here in the United States uh, visiting my family, getting some health care, and then doing some mission appeals to assist the Archdiocese. And you're going to hear a little bit about that in my homily. Just a couple of other wonderful things about this Mass. We have Fabiola, who's going to receive her first Holy Communion. So we're looking forward to that. Keep that in mind as we listen to the readings today. It's a beautiful day for 
Fabiola to receive her first Holy Communion. I also want to share that I'm with my uncle, uh, Father Michael Gould, a Marinal priest of more than 65 years, spent 60 years as a missionary priest in Bolivia. And he's visiting Chicago for part of the summer, and I asked him to come and be with us at this Mass. And now, sisters and brothers, we're gathered in this sacred place, giving all our concerns to God and asking God to help us prepare to receive the food that nourishes the soul. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the wine of compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us and satisfy our thirst so that we may feed others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book 
of kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree, but then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate, drank, he lay down again, but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked forty days and forty nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. Your feet. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be the imitation of Christ as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that the one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, friends, as promised, I want to tell you just a little bit about the last year my first year as a priest in Tanzania. Exactly one year ago this week, 
I arrived back in Tanzania and landed at Kilimanjaro International Airport. Two of my closest priest friends were there to pick me up, and we had the blessing of all saying Mass together there at the foot of Africa's tallest mountain. Then one of these friends and I got into my new to me secondhand Toyota, and we began driving 15 hours west to the Archdiocese of Tabora, my new home. We were on a bit of a deadline to reach Tabora because there was another man recently returned from studies in Rome and he was being ordained to the priesthood. And since I had been ordained here in Chicago by Cardinal Supic, it became sort of a double event in which my ordination was also celebrated locally. At the end of that mass, which in good African style was about four hours long, the Archbishop called for the envelopes, and he handed each of us an envelope, and then he publicly announced our postings. The other priest, who had studied canon law, was assigned to the marriage tribunal and to assist at the cathedral. But I was appointed to assist at a small rural parish, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, about 25 miles from the main town where the cathedral is located. I felt so pleased and affirmed when I heard this appointment. I could feel the Holy Spirit at work. My uncle, Father Mike, who I introduced at the beginning of the Mass, had told me, Patrick, make sure they send you to the village for at least a year. Learn to do ministry with the real people on the ground. And this was my opportunity. The village of Magiri, where the parish is located, is a very small place. Within the boundaries of the village, I think there are about 3,000 people, most of them on small farms. But there at the little village center, maybe five or 600. More than half of them are Muslim. And most of the rest are Catholic. We have only one Sunday Mass there. But here's the challenge. We have 19 other villages and outstations of about the same size within the area of the parish. Each one has a small church. Each one has a catechist, a local woman or man who serves as the local educator, prepares people for the sacraments, and leads prayer services when a priest is not available. Sometimes we can get to these masses on using the vehicle, using the car, along dirt roads, but many of them are reachable only by motorcycle. We go along narrow dirt paths between the rice paddies. So here's the drill I use. There's a guy in the choir who is very good on the motorcycle, and he knows all the shortcuts. He sits in front and drives. Then they put me in the middle, I think because they're afraid I'm going to fall off. And behind me sits an altar server, and the altar server has on a big backpack, and in the backpack are the chalice and the missiles and the vestments and all the supplies for the Mass. So we head off, might be 45 minutes, might be an hour to that second Mass. When we arrive, it's quite efficient. We park the motorcycle. We all multitask. So the driver of the motorcycle warms up the choir, usually the day's psalm. The altar server sets up for Mass. I usually hear a few confessions under a tree, and then the Mass can begin. I want to tell you just one little story of something that happened this last spring that I thought was quite beautiful and meaningful. As I arrived for the second Mass, the catechist told me that there was an older woman, a Christian living nearby, who very much wanted to receive Holy Communion. No one knows exactly how old she is, but they think she is around 97. She has lost most of her memory, but she remembers hymns from her childhood, and she remembers how to receive communion. So I made sure to consecrate and reserve an extra host. After the Mass, I began walking not far, maybe 250 yards, two football fields, 
But what surprised me was this. The whole small congregation walked with me. We entered this little compound, two or three mud houses. We gathered around this old grandmother who was sitting on a straw mat. We read the gospel of the day, prayed, sang hymns, and then she received Holy Communion. COVID precautions aside for a moment, I want to say this is the way the church is supposed to be. The sacrament does not come from the priest alone, but is from the whole community gathered in God's name. I'd like to pivot for just a moment to today's beautiful readings, and maybe this little story can give us some new insight from an African perspective. As always, the themes of the first reading and the gospel inform and enrich each other. And that powerful drama from the Book of Kings, the high prophet Elijah has just had his major face-to-face -face confrontation on Mount Carmel and destroyed hundreds of the priests of Baal. And now the pagan queen Jezebel seeks to kill Elijah in return, and he is fleeing. Remember the words that the angel said to Elijah. Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. We should also take this message of the angel to heart. Eat, or the journey will be too long for you. Then in that beautiful discourse from John chapter 6, Jesus tells us, I am the bread of life, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. So we put these two insights together, and we remember that Jesus is the bread of life, and that we must eat, or the journey will be too much for us. The journey of life will be too much for us. How beautiful and how authentic that this elderly African grandmother, who has lost many of her cognitive faculties, still knows deeply and intuitively that she must eat, or the journey will be too much for her. She might not have understood everything that was said, everything that was going around her, but she understood the one important thing, which is that she was being surrounded by the love of God and the love of God's people, the church. She knew that she was being fed. And so whether we're in Tabora, Tanzania, or in the South Loop of Chicago, that is why we gather physically for Mass, to eat, lest the journey be too much for us, and also to feed one another. Finally, let me say that there is great hope and opportunity in the church in Tanzania, but there are also great needs. At our regular Sunday Mass there in the main parish, when they bring up the offertory, people usually bring up a chicken, a, bag, a basket of mangoes and papayas, some ground nuts, Someone will bring three or four fresh eggs that the hens laid that morning. People also contribute cash, but we've looked at the numbers, and in U.S. currency, the contributions work out to something like nine U.S. dollars a week. And frankly, it's not enough even to pay the light bill for the parish. We do have electricity there at the main parish. These Christians are simple farmers and herders, they're not destitute, but they're living a subsistence lifestyle largely outside of the cash economy. I wanted to share one need with you. My archdiocese currently has over 70 young men in seminary studying for the priesthood. And even though the seminaries grow their own food, the seminarians go out in the morning with hand hose, and they cultivate maize and beans and sweet potatoes and all sorts of other things. 
Even so, I was told by the diocesan accountant that it takes a, a sum of $2,600 a year in cash cost to educate one man. This is for travel and health care and books and tuition. I'm very concerned that as badly as the world needs priests, we may turn down qualified and holy young men for a lack of $2,600 a year. Two weeks ago, I was preaching outside of Philadelphia. A beautiful family with young children waited for me after Mass, and they asked me for a mailing address. It turns out they were not even from that parish, and they did not know there was a mission appeal. They just happened to come to that Mass. I gave them my sister's address here in Chicago, and this week I got an envelope from them. I opened it up. There was a note and a check for exactly $2,600. And they wrote, Father, please give this check to your archbishop. We can't solve all the world's problems, but we were inspired by your commitment to Torah and your love for Tanzania. And as a family, we have decided that we can keep at least one young man in seminary. I was so moved and touched to receive this beautiful note. This is how we help feed others and how we ourselves are fed. Of course, not everyone is able to do so much and be so generous. But if you are able to contribute anything at all for the needs of the church in Tabora, I would be most grateful. In any case, it's just lovely to be back with you again here at Old St. Mary's. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for listening, for your prayers and good wishes. And now let us prepare to eat at the Lord's table and strengthen ourselves for our own ongoing journey. Friends, let's now stand and thinking of our brothers and sisters all around the world, let's recite the creed of the things that we believe in common. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness, forgiveness of, sins, of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now ask our loving God to hear the prayers we voice for those in need of strength and healing. That the Church will continue to nourish people everywhere with the bread of life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and bring healing to all those who have been affected by the continuing acts of violence by guns, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have suffered from the devastation of drought, flood, and wildfire. Keep safe all those who come to assist them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Have mercy on refugees who have been torn from their homes to seek new lands. Relieve the afflicted and the sorrowful who feel that they have no place in the world and give them new hope, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick will be comforted in their time of trial, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all those who have died, especially George William Grobel, will have eternal rest, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer, O God of mercy and love. You sustain us on our journey of faith. Strengthen those who struggle on life's journey and bring them one day into eternal happiness with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we will take up two collections. The first time the baskets are passed will be to receive your regular Old St. Mary's offering. Then the baskets will be passed again for the Mission Cooperative Appeal collection. There are special envelopes in the pews for this special collection. Please make your check payable to Old St. Mary's Church. You who are joining us from at home may mail your contributions to the parish office or donate online by clicking on the Give button on the parish website, oldstmarys.com. You can also donate to the Mission Cooperative Appeal there. As always, we thank you for your generous support of the ministry of Old St. Mary's. The song during the preparation of the gifts can be found at number 1033, Eat This Bread, number 1033. Oh. 
come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set the sacrifice of Praise the glory of his name. Our Lord and Father's church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world. You have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. So with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim... You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them with, into the light of your, of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be all heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now pray together in the words our Savior taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's in some safe way offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to everyone watching from a home. Peace, peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Friends, for Holy Communion, we're going to ask uh, Fabiola to come forward first and receive her first Holy Communion, followed by her family, and then we'll proceed with uh, everyone else as normal. The song during Communion can be found at number 1029, I Am the Bread of Life, number 1029.
somebody first. I am I the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and to believe in me shall not thirst. Body no one can come to me. And I will raise you up, Body of Christ. and I will raise you up, and I will raise you Body of Christ. up on the last the body of Christ. day. The Body of Christ. The bread that I will
almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. There are some announcements here. Thank you for joining us in prayer and worship today, both in person and from a distance. Let's continue to pray for and look out for one another. The Paulist fathers who have staffed Old St. Mary's for 113 years are in the midst of the Hope for the Future capital campaign. Thank you to all who have made a pledge for this important effort. And if you have not received a letter from the president of the Paulists, Father Eric Andrews, with detailed campaign information, please let Father Brad or the parish office know. Mark your calendars. The annual parish picnic is just around the corner, Sunday, August 22nd, following the 11 a.m. Mass. Registration is open for this fall's Sunday Faith Formation classes. See today's bulletin for more information. Our Just One Item collection is next weekend, the third Sunday of the month. When shopping this week, consider purchasing something extra for our neighbors at St. James. Just one item, a bar of soap, a roll of toilet paper, a tube of toothpaste, a container of deodorant, etc. Place it in the baskets in the commons when you come to Mass, or bring it to the parish office during the week. Thank you. As we continue to return to Mass in person, we need liturgical ministers. If you are interested in serving as an usher or greeter, lector, Eucharistic minister, sacristan or altar server, or if you've served in any capacity prior to the pandemic and are ready to return to service, please contact Scott Williams. In accord with the Health Department and Archdiocesan guidance, those persons who are unvaccinated are asked to wear masks for mass and for indoor parish events. Fully vaccinated individuals are encouraged to wear masks. Thank you for your continued respectful and charitable concern for others. We continue to live stream weekday and weekend Masses on our parish website, oldstmarys.com, and the Masses are also uploaded to YouTube. Copies of the weekly parish bulletin are available. You may pick up a copy after Mass from the tables in the commons, or as always, read it online at oldstmarys.com. Two other very quick ones. I want to ask my uncle to stand again and to say that this week he is celebrating his 94th birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'd like to ask my sister to remain standing and my aunt, Sister Charlotte Gould, a Dominican sister of the Cincinnati congregation. And today is the Feast of St. Dominic. So let's also congratulate <laughs> Sister Charlotte. And now finally, can I invite Fabiola to come forward uh, here to in front of the altar, stand to greet the people. Okay. We'll just have a few quick photos if the family wants to come up, just a quick shot. Who's taking pictures? I thought we had a photographer. Okay. Thank you.
And finally, my gratitude again to the Paulist Fathers, the Parish Council, and all of you for welcoming me back, and I hope to see you in a future year. Please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The recessional is number 738. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Number 738. They didn't leave you anything. <laughs> they didn't leave you anything. <laughs>